Hello soldiers of the internet, this is Casado Perfect here bringing you another Pokemon Black Wi-Fi battle video and uh, it is a OU match versus Mr. Butler from my Skype account. I decided to challenge him and he accepted and we had one of the greatest battles that I have had in a very very long time. So um, another thing that I really would like to point out in this video is that I am really in depth with you guys because you guys left a lot of feedback in my last video telling me what's wrong and what's good about me and about my channel and stuff like that. and. Uh, I'm really grateful uh, to you guys for that and I'm uh, really gonna take all those comments in consideration but anyways let's get into the battle right now uh, my enemy is gonna lead it with a Jirachi I'm gonna lead it with my Haxorus I saw the setup move coming so I went for the taunt works out in the end because he went for the reflect at this point I'm predicting a switch into something else and I go for the Source Dance I get a free Source Dance up because he goes into the um, Rotom Watch form and uh, I go for the Outrage I know that he's got a Jirachi and that uh, Outrage is resist resisted by uh, Jirachi but even though I knew that I knew that I would do, do a decent amount of damage to the Jirachi because at this point Jirachi is my less uh, less worrying um, like Pokemon in my mind in this battle so anyways um, it seems like a Jirachi is gonna go down on the next turn but um, I have already already wasted like three turns of Outrage so I'm gonna get confused on this turn He's gonna be able to put up Reflect in uh, Stealth Rocks, which is good for him. So I'm gonna go for the Earthquake. I don't hit myself in the Confusion, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, Exodus has done a great job, even though my enemy has already put up Stealth Rocks. And I do have Focus Sash Pokemon on my team, and I don't have a Rapid Spinner, which is kind of bad. But anyways, he's gonna bring out a Garchomp, and I'm guessing this Garchomp is Scarf. So I'm gonna switch out into Microcellia, knowing that a Earthquake or Outrage is most likely coming. So I'm going out into Microcellia, which seems to be the better choice. Uh, he locks himself himself into Outrage, and at this point I'm like, well, um, the Outrage does a lot of damage, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up Reflect. Uh, he's confused on the next turn, and uh, that is amazing because I'm gonna be able to put up my Reflect. I'm gonna be compressing or suppressing uh, Mr. Garchomp right there. He's not gonna be able to do as much damage as he uh, could potentially do. So um, at this point he decided to switch into the Sap does. Uh, maybe because he was locked into the Outrage and since I have a Reflect up, I don't think he's that stupid to stay in, so good switch right there. So I'm gonna go for the Moonlight and recover my HP because that seems to be the better choice at this point. Uh, I get some leftage recovery as well and he goes for the T-Wave which is gonna play a big role in this match because we'll see um, that at some point in this match I'm gonna get uh, paralyzed and that's not really gonna work out in the end for me. But anyways, I'm gonna go for the Toxic here because I know that uh, some Sap does uh, do roost up and uh, they recover their HP. But as long as he, he is or it is uh, Toxic, it will no longer be uh, able to stay for a long time in the field because you know toys, Poison, uh, I mean Toxic, always does more damage every turn that goes by. But anyways, I'm gonna switch out into Landorus, breaking the Thunderbolt because that was kind of predictable and uh, that works out for me because he goes for the Thunderbolt. I avoid the damage and at this point I'm guessing that he will definitely predict the uh, Stone Edge. So I'm gonna go for a U-turn and get the uh, like the switch advantage because I was not sure what he was about to switch into. And uh, it seems he goes out into Land Shark, which is another Landorus. And uh, at this point I'm like, well, I'm gonna send out my uh, Scarfed uh, Magnezone and uh, explode on his face. But um, for some reason he predicted that and um, went out into Sabdos, which was a really good play on his part. One thing I didn't know in this generation though is that uh, Explosion is actually nerfed. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't, it does no longer have the uh, defense of your enemy whenever you use it. It just basically is a move that has 250 uh, base power. That's all. So that uh, I really pay the price for that, and that's kind of unfortunate because the Sabdo doesn't take that much damage from the explosion either way. So that's really bad. I'm gonna send out my Terrakion here because that seems to be the better choice, and I'm gonna go for the Rock Slide uh, since it's super effective. And I know that everything that comes in will be hit by it. And um, he decided to stay in and uh, sacrifice his Sabdos. I do get a useless Critco hit because he would go down anyways. Um, so I lose a little bit of HP because I do have the Life Warp, and he's gonna send out this Terrakion. At this point, I'm like. Well, it is probably a, cho a, a speed tie if he's not scarfed, but um, I do realize that he is scarfed at the end of the match. At this point, I really, I really thought that it was just a speed tie that he won, which was kind of unfortunate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and send out Cresselia because Cresselia can resist the Sacred Sword and uh, Earthquake and uh, Stone Edge and whatsoever uh, that Drakeon is packing. So at this point, I'm like, I know that he's got more offensive Pokémon uh, on his team than defensive, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a Reflect once again. As he sent out the Landorus, Landorus is gonna go ahead and put up uh, Surf Dance, and at this point I'm like, uh, I'm very scared because he could potentially go for the Stone Edge and get a critical hit, and even though I got Reflect up, that will do still a lot of damage, but um, 
I really wanted to see how much blood Cresselia has, and even though he went for a freaking sword dance with Life Orb, that did absolutely nothing. And this is why I use Cresselia. This thing is just so sturdy, and you can count on this Pokemon so much. It is really amazing, but anyways, he's gonna go for the hidden power, and the reason being for why he went for the hidden power at this point was because I do have the reflect up, and he thought maybe if I, maybe if he attacks me on the special side, it will do more damage, but uh, he was kind of wrong on that side, but he's gonna go ahead and set, uh, and set up more swords dance here, he's at plus four. Uh, attack which is kind of unfortunate for him because I don't get paralyzed at this point and I go for the psychic and I take him out So I um, things are looking very good for me um, at this point the guard jump comes in and my reflect wears off So I know that I will take a lot of damage from a outrage or a crunch or whatever he was about to use So I decided to stay in and go for the toxic because as long as the uh, as long as his main Sweeper on his team which is gonna be guard jump is toxic Everything will be alright for me because I can just pretty much stall him out here, put up Reflect once again and go for the Moonlight on the next turn. So, yeah, he goes for another Crunch here and gets a Defense Drop, which is kind of unfortunate. At this point, I'm like, dang it. And I got a Paralyzed Hex as well because I really wanted to put up Reflect on that turn, but it didn't really work out in the end, which is kind of unfortunate. He is going to be able to take me out on the next turn with a Crunch because I'm going to stay in and I'm going to use Cresselia as a Death Fodder because I don't really... Uh, one my other Pokemon to get hurt by the guard jump and Cresselia pretty much did his job at this point So and I pretty much know his whole team from the very beginning So I know what to sacrifice and what to not sacrifice So I'm gonna send out my Landorus and I know he's locked into crunch and I know if he switches out I'm gonna I'm still gonna do a nice chunk with an earth power uh, against the Terrakion Or whatsoever he brings in so um, he decided to stay in and go for the crunch a earth power boosted by life warp uh, and Shear Force will do the job here. Take out, takes out the uh, guard jump as he brings out a Terrakion. At this point, I'm still, I'm still thinking that the Terrakion is not Scarf because Terrakion base speed is higher than Landorus base speed. And I thought, well, he's gonna outspeed me and just gonna Stone Edge. Uh, unfortunately for me, he does not miss any single Stone Edge until a certain point in his game. So he's gonna be able to take out my Hexers and also my Landers. So at uh, this point it like it's like one v one and he does go for a Stone Edge once again, but he misses. So I go for the Destiny Bond and I'm like, holy shit, he's faster, so that means he's carved. So at this point I'm like, well, I'm kind of late to realize that he is carved. So he goes for another Stone Edge and misses once again. I'm going for the Destiny Bond because it's a one v one situation. And I know if I can take him out with a Destiny Bond as well, it will be a draw, so there will be no winner. So on the third turn, he hits the Stone Edge, and at this point I'm like, dang it, I'm slower, so I don't think the Destiny Bond will count. But it does count, and I'm like, holy shit, look at that, it is a draw, that is so amazing. Like, oh my goodness, I have never had a battle like this in a long, long ass time. I remember, I think I, I've got, I've only got like uh, three draws in my entire um, Jujub Wi-Fi battle career on Pokemon, so uh, that was really really intense I might have a rematch with him very soon, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video So if you like the video thumb up, but um, guys, thank you for watching and until next time peace